Good morning. Well, we have a good crew here with us this morning, and a couple uh, weeks ago we got to share in baptism, uh, and that's always a fun thing, little Lucas back there, and we're looking forward to uh, sharing in two more baptisms here as we start the service off this morning, and the great thing is they're cousins, so, uh, and that's really cool. Our pictures are up on the screen, so uh, if the families want to come down front with me, we'll have our baptism, and then we'll do some singing. I stand over here. Can you see them better then? Okay. All right. Well, we have uh, the Trout Clan with us this morning and the Murphy Clan, and we're uh, going to have a, a good time doing some baptisms. And I, I didn't know if maybe uh, everybody want to take a chance real fast just to introduce yourselves. Um, I'm Kyle. I'm Aubrey. <laughs> Patrick. Weston. Abby. Hope. All right. And of course, Hope and Abby are uh, sisters, and so that, that's a special thing too as well. So I told them all just to come up here at once because you don't get to do that very often in the church. And so we've got little Everly that's going to be baptized this morning, and Hudson, who's 10 weeks old, about? Am I right? Oh, I guess good. Uh, so we're very happy to have them. You uh, can just listen and follow in if you like. And the question that I'm going to ask the parents are questions that we've asked in the Methodist Church uh, for a very long time. And so uh, I'll tell you what to say, and you can just repeat after me. And every, everybody's willing to repeat if they would like. So, Okay, on behalf of the whole church, I ask all of you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness and reject the evil powers of this world and repent of your sins? If so, will you answer, we do. Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? If so, will you again answer, we do. Do you confess Christ as your Savior and put your whole trust in his grace and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church, which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races? If so, will you again answer, we do. All right. And then the last question is... Uh, Will you nurture little Hudson and Everly in Christ's holy church that by your teaching as your, and as your family be the example that he and she uh, need to be guided to accept grace, God's grace for themselves, to profess their faith openly and to lead a Christian life? If so, will you answer? We will. All right. Then you, you all get to join in with this last one here yourselves, too. Do you as uh, Christ's body here, the, the church, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ and your commitment to uh, being with these families to help with these little ones? If so, will you answer? We do. All right. We hear everybody behind you. And do we want to go little first or big first? Want Hudson come up here? All right. Hudson, Leroy, Trout. All right, Everly, you want to come up here? Uh, 
You can stay with mom. That's okay. <laughs> Look, Everly. Hey, Everly. Come here. All right. See that? You see it? You see it? All right. <laughs> Everly Rose, right? Everly Rose Murphy. I baptize you in the name of the Father, <laughs> of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Amen. That's okay, we're all done now. Can you wave hi? <laughs> Just I'm not sure. Well, if you would, would you join me in congratulating the families of having these young ones join the church? Let me say a prayer for you, is that okay? Heavenly Father, we thank you so much that we uh, get to take time to do baptisms and uh, all the things in church that make up making people feel a part of a church. And uh, we're so thankful for our two families up here and for our two new little ones. And uh, just watch over each of them, keep them safe as they grow up, and uh, help each family as they help them to grow in you. It's in Christ's name that we pray. Amen. Amen. As they make their way back to their seats, we want to welcome you to the Ignite service. And uh, as they are um, making their way back, if you're able, would you stand with us this morning as we open up in some worship? And uh, this first song we're going to open with uh, takes some participation from the crowd. So uh, if you have some rhythm, we're going to need you. We just need you to follow us on the claps to get into this. And uh, the, the song says within it um, that we won't be quiet. So I'm going to need your voices to be loud with us this morning as we lead you in worship. So... Would you sing with us this morning, House of the Lord? Yes. Yeah. 
wonderful song to start off with. And there is joy in the house of the Lord today as we watch these families come forward this morning and, and uh, give their honor and dedication to those children to raise them in the love and admonition and the fear of the Lord. So it is a good day to praise and worship. We are excited you're here. Just a couple of quick announcements. Uh, and they believe in the next service, the 1030 service, it, will, it is Music Sunday. I think they have every choir they have available singing and playing and doing today. So uh, if you're able, able uh, go and attend that and encourage them and, and uh, love on them as well. If you attend the Monday night Bible study that I lead, I'm going to feed you real well this Monday. Uh, we're going to have a cookout to celebrate our last um, Bible study before we take a break for the summer. So uh, hamburgers and hot dogs will be provided. Just asking if you come bring a side and your appetite. And uh, we'll kind of just do an overview quickly of all of the things we've gone over in the book of Acts. Uh, learning about what the church is, was, and how God formed it and made it to be. Uh, so you're invited to come and be a part of that. Other than that, I don't know of any other announcements going on here at Central Trinity. So we're going to... Oh, Caitlin. That's right. Caitlin's sick, if you didn't know that. So she is home watching live today. Hi, Caitlin. And uh, so this is Olivia. You've met Olivia before. Olivia's now singing all of the different female parts since I can't sing those parts. But uh, anyway, Olivia's taking care of that for us this morning. But hi, Caitlin. Hope you're feeling better. Uh, prayers to her as she recovers. But let's keep singing this morning and sing Open Up the Heavens.
something, we were going to do something a little bit different. If you'll have a seat for me this morning. Every once in a while, we like to bring you a new song. And uh, instead of just making you stand through a song you may not know, we would just kind of like to sing this through uh, a time for you. And uh, about midway through, I'll invite you to stand again with us as I think you can pick up the chorus pretty quickly. But this new song that we're bringing is not new at all, but it's, it's something that's very important because it's singing about how great the love of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ truly is. And I think that's something we often forget. I've, I've shared from the pulpit many times, we have lost the word love because we love everything. We love the Buckeyes. We love pizza. We love all those things. And that's not the same kind of a love that we have for our Savior. So it's very important that we remember as God's children that the love we have for our Lord is very different than the word we use in our language today. So we want to uh, sing this song for you today, and I'll invite you to stand about halfway through. It's called How Great Is Your Love. From the darkness I called your name And into darkness your mercy came You called me out, lifted me up How great is your love You bore my weakness, you took my shame Buried my burdens in fields of grace. You called me out, lifted me up. How great is your love. From the heights of heaven, you stepped down to earth in a sin. that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So is the same for his word. He never changes, and that's what this bridge is talking about. There has never been, and there will never be, a God like you, a love so true. There has never been, and there Oh, uh-huh. 
come to you before your throne this morning and father our hearts are crying out how great is your love for us father in spite of all of the sin and the just the dumb and stupid things that we do in life father you still love us you love us you were still willing to go to that cross and die and take our place and take all of the weight of every single person's sin in history to take it upon yourself that is how great your love is for us. So, Father, as we gather together today as your children, help us. Help us to worship you, Father, not just through our songs, but, Father, help us to, to worship you today through the preaching of your word. May your Holy Spirit rain down upon us and change us, Father, as, as we hear from your word today. May your Holy Spirit convict us, Father, and change us as only your word can do. God, we give you all the honor, the glory, and the praise today. We ask it all in the name of Jesus. Amen. You may be seated this morning. And hopefully, you haven't had enough of me yet. My voice is a little dry from singing, but uh, I am honored and it is truly a privilege to get to preach God's Word today. And I entitled this sermon, Counterfeit, um, which sounds really like, whoo, counterfeit, this sounds good. I'm not going to teach you how to make counterfeit money. That's illegal. So anybody watching in law enforcement, not what it's about. Facebook, don't take me down for that. But uh, counterfeit, but it's something that we encounter often and we don't even realize it. And I don't know if you know this or not, but I, I, I like to watch documentaries. I'm a little bit of a nerd, if some of you didn't know that, but most of you do. But uh, being a nerd, I watch documentaries. And I watched a documentary about the U.S. Treasury Department. And the U.S. Treasury Department has a counterfeit department. Go, go figure. The most counterfeited currency in the world is American dollars. And when I watched the documentary, it was amazing to me. Do you know how they detect counterfeit money? Oh, they have the pen. You know, they mark the pen when you go to Walmart and you pay with a 20. They mark it and all those things. Those are the ways they've come up with to help s slow the spread of counterfeit money. But those who are in that department, do you know what they do? They study real money. Well, why does that make sense? Well, it makes sense because if you know what the real thing looks like, smells like, tastes like, feels like, if you know what that real thing really is, then it's very easy to spout, spot a fake. You see, they don't, they don't study the fake stuff. They study the real thing in order that they can pick out something that's not real. 
And as I watched that, I thought, man, what an amazing thing that could really apply to church. We could weed out counterfeit stuff if we would just study the real thing. And I'm not talking about Coca-Cola. I'm talking about Jesus Christ and his word. If we would study the real thing, if we would be grounded in what it is we believe, we would know the truth. The Bible says, and the truth will set you free. So we could study the real thing. And that's what we should be doing. So my question is, how do you see counterfeit faith? How do you see counterfeit teachers? How do you see these things that go on within the church. And there's a a passage of scripture today. Steph, you can go ahead and put this up. This comes from the book of 2 Peter, 2 chapter, verses 1 through 3. And I'll read it here in a moment. But with everything that's going on in the world, and it seems like it's an ever-changing world, right? Especially the gas prices, they change about every day, right? I wish those were counterfeit. I wish I'd go to the pump and it would say, only a dollar. Woo! That'd be great, but that's just not the truth of how things are happening. But with all the ongoings in the world today, what we need, and when I say we, I'm talking about the church, God's people. What we need today is authentic, biblical Christianity. Authentic, biblical Christianity. That is what we need today, and that's what this passage really uh, deals with. Uh, It tells us how to, about false teachers and things like that that are already among us, but how can we know? So, just read along with me if you can read that. I made that font a little small and I apologize, but, but I'll go back through it for us. But it says this, But false prophets also arose among the people, just as there will also be false teachers among you, who will secretly introduce destructive heresies, even denying the master who bought them, bringing swift destruction upon themselves. Many will follow their sensuality, and because of them the way of the truth will be maligned. And in their greed, they will exploit you with false words. Their judgment from long ago is not idle, and their destruction is not asleep. Now, this sounds like a very, oh my word, how can you preach a happy sermon from such scary-sounding verses? But I I want you to hear something. The Word of God is useful from Genesis 1-1 all the way to the end of Revelation. The Word of God is useful. And this is useful to us because we live in a day and time where things are just simply counterfeit. So I was reading some articles and in, in researching things for, for the sermon. And if you, how many of you have an iPhone? Just raise your hand if you're an iPhone. How many of you are Android? <laughs> <laughs> and I only go because I don't know how to operate, operate an Android. Um, that's about the only reason I have an iPhone. But I was doing some research, and the iPhone, just hear me, iPhone switched designers when it went to the iPhone 11. And I thought, okay, well, that's nothing new in the technological world. Why did they switch designer people? It didn't say. But then I read something interesting. It said, did you know that there's biblical references on your iPhone? And I thought, well, that's strange. Never heard that before. It says, if you have an iPhone 11 or newer, look at the bottom of your phone. I said, okay. So I looked at the bottom of my phone. He goes, you'll notice that there's six speaker holes on the left, six speaker holes on the right. That equals how many? Twelve. Those represent the twelve disciples. And I thought, that's interesting. That's kind of a cool thing. And I said, but it's not done there. And then in the very middle, there's another larger hole in the middle. And that power plug there represents Jesus Christ. See, Jesus is in the center of his disciples. And it says, and on top of that, you can only hear and power your phone through Jesus. Just like you can only hear what the Holy Spirit says if you have a connection with him and you can only find power in Jesus. And I thought, that is the coolest thing I've ever heard. I'm only buying iPhones from now on. Because I looked at my phone, sure enough, six holes on the left, six holes on the right, one hole in the middle, there's Jesus right in the middle. Doesn't that sound awesome? It's completely made up. I thought of that looking at my own phone in my office. But it sounds believable, right? I mean, I probably had some of you going, well, this is really cool. I'm going to have to switch from an Android to an iPhone. Well, looky there. Six and six. Yep, there it is. But that's how counterfeit faith, Christianity, and false teachers work. You see, I I took a little bit of truth, and I wrapped it around something completely false. Now, I could have proclaimed that to be truth, walked away, and all of you get on Facebook. Let me tell you what I learned in the sermon today. My iPhone is holy. It's Christ-like. 
But that's how these things work its way into a church. And that's why we have to be oh so careful. So I want to give you three keys today on how to spot something counterfeit within the church. You ready? Here we go. Number one. It comes from verse one. You need to check the method. Check the method. What do I mean by the method? I mean the way in which they present stuff. Their, their methodology of how they present information. Listen to verse one. But there are also false prophets among the people, just as there will be false teachers among you. The you there meaning us. The church of today, there will be false teachers among you. They will secretly bring in destructive heresies, even denying the master who bought them and will bring swift destruction on themselves. One of my favorite pastors has this quote to say, and I think it's so so relevant for today. I don't know if any of you are taking notes. Those of you online, if you're taking notes, this is a quote I would write down in my Bible because it goes right along with Scripture. It says this, It is better to be divided by the truth than it is to be united in error. Let me say that again. It is better to be divided by the truth than be united in error. And that comes from Adrian Rogers, one of my favorite pastors. And and you know what? I thought he's kind of a a newer, newish pastor. Is there anyone of old that had anything to say on this kind of a subject? So I found Martin Luther. Anybody ever heard of Martin Luther? Luther. You know, the whole Protestant Reformation thing that's taking place. This is what he says, and, and listen to this very closely. I do not want to know anything of peace and concord if the word of God is thereby lost. And the word, eternal life, and everything else is forfeited. It is not right for me here to draw back and give way out of love toward you or toward any other man. But before the word, everyone else must give way. See, even in his time, they were dealing with with counterfeit and false prophets and false teachers in that time as well, and false doctrines. And they were trying to to, to sum it up. And that's why a lot of church leaders, especially during the Protestant Reformation, got in trouble because they were trying to protect God's holy word. And they would call out these heresies that were slowly brought in and wrapped around some sort of a truth. They were wrapped around and they were brought into the church. And when they would call them out, people would get upset. Oh, you can't do that. You can't do that. You can do that. Listen. Listen. Peter warned there would be false teachers even amongst us today who would bring in heresies. What is a heresy? That sounds like a good Christian word, right? Heresy. You ever heard someone call it a heretic? This is the word that it comes from. And that, the word heresy just simply means a, a division. It means to, to set up something divided. And, and biblical heresy talks about choosing a position that is contrary to God's word. And when you take a position contrary to God's word, you create division. That is why we must know what we believe and we must stand firm in what it is we do believe. Those heresies would be brought in privately, secretly. Did you catch that? Do you ever notice that when someone has something false to say? And I don't want to get into the weeds of politics, but if you watch whatever news channel you want to watch, isn't it amazing that they can just say whatever they want and they make it sound so amazing and they can be completely wrong i mean they can turn any falsehood into a truth and they say it with a smile and their million dollar white teeth smile their 500 hundred dollar tie and suit and all of those things they can say anything they want to and when they say it in such a way they're bringing in falsehoods and that's across every channel it's everywhere and that's the world in which we live but they're going to bring these things in secretly because they don't put it out and and i mean imagine if i said today when i was giving my iphone story Now, this story I'm about to tell you is completely false, so don't pay attention to it. Don't listen to me. You would have done exactly as I said. Okay, this is something dumb, false, and stupid. I'm not going to listen to it. John, move on. Keep going. We got to go get lunch. Let's go. They don't do that. They bring it in secretly. They hide it, and usually they wrap it around some sort of truth. They wrap around a Christian word to make it sound like it belongs. And I know my mom's watching today online. She's going to be very mad at me when I use her as an example, I often get calls from my mom. John, I was listening to this online preacher, and he said, blah, 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 blah. And I immediately, in my response, if you ever talk to me about things theological, my response is always this, where's your scripture for that? Because if it doesn't come from God's word, I don't want to talk about it. If it comes to things of the church, if it's not from God's word, there's not an argument you can make, because I believe in God's word. Well, John, but he said it in such a nice way. I've had, I've been to the doctor. 
I've been to the doctor, and any of the, the more heavy set guys in the crowd today, you've been to the doctor, and the doctor goes, Well, might be a good idea to become more healthy with your eating choices. Let me, let me translate that for you. Hey, you're fat. But it sounds much nicer to say, maybe you should think about your eating habits. How much do you eat? <laughs> I mean, I'm sorry, petite elephant is a beautiful size. I'm okay with that. We like these, these things that are wrapped in nice ways, right? God doesn't always wrap the things in nice ways. He just simply doesn't. God is straight and to the point. When he's upset about something, he goes, this is what's wrong. Don't do this. And it's the same for when it comes to his grace and to his mercy from Jesus Christ. My grace will abound. I love you. I love you to the point that I am willing to send my own son to die on the cross for you. You need to watch their method because they're going to bring these things in secretly, mixing truth and error. Maybe you're sitting there going, well, I know the difference between what's true and what's not true. Did I have you going with the iPhone story? (laughs) Bet you did. I even convinced myself a little bit. I thought, this is really good. I could probably write a book, make millions of dollars and sell that book. But that's how easily those things come in. You need to check their method. If they're doing things in secret and they're just taking things that that you don't agree with or maybe sounds a little off to you and it's wrapped in just a little bit of truth, question it. Because we are talking about eternal, eternality for people. False teachers are going to lead people straight to hell. And I've heard this phrase said so often in churches. I've heard it in my own Bible study. Well, we just need to love them. Let me be very clear with you what the Bible says about that. You can love a person straight into hell if you don't give them the truth. It's not love that saves them from you. It's Jesus Christ that saves them. And if you don't give them that truth, you can love them right into hell. Be very careful. We have to be careful with all of these things. Not only check their method, you need to check their message. Look at verses 2 and 3. Many will follow their unrestrained ways, and the way of truth will be blasphemed because of them. They will exploit you in their greed with deceptive words. Their condemnation long ago is not idle, and their destruction does not sleep. What is the way of truth? Do you know what the way of truth is? It's It's a famous verse we used to quote all the time, John 14, 6. Jesus said... I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. Nobody comes to the Father but by me. So you need to check their message because I'm going to tell you something. There's a lot of things out there, religions in this world, and you know, we, we, we divide all the, all the divisions out there. There's Hinduism, there's Buddhism, there's Christianity, there's Protestantism, there's Catholicism. There's Baptist, Southern Baptist, Northern Baptist, Eastern Baptist, Western Baptist, shrimp goop, shrimp soup, shrimp gumbo. <laughs> Sorry, wrong movie. We, I, I can name you for an hour all of the different denominations that have come across. I'm gonna, let me just break it all down for you. There's only two kinds of religion. You ready? True religion, false religion. That's it. How do you know if you have true religion? If they preach in their message... Christ and Christ crucified, that's true religion. If they add to that in any way, shape, or form, if they add something else to that, well, you can be saved through Jesus, yes, but you need to have blah, blah, blah. No, 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 no. Where's your scripture for that? Where's your scripture for that? The only way to the Father is Jesus Christ. Jesus and Jesus alone. That is the way of truth. The Bible is self-sufficient. We don't need to add any additional books. I don't want to stand up here and, and, and try to tick off a bunch of people, but I just want to be honest here. All you need is the Bible. We don't need an additional book that goes along to read alongside the Bible. The Bible is self-sufficient. I don't need anything else. It, is, it stands on its own. In fact, we are warned within Scripture, do not add or take away from the Bible. It's dangerous and it's wrong. It is the Bible that tells us that it's Jesus, the Messiah, who is virgin born, who is co-equal with God, who is co-eternal with God the Father. Adrian Rogers puts it like this, and I thought it was very succinct. The Bible has one theme, salvation. It has one hero, Jesus. It has one villain, Satan. 
So if you're listening to someone teach or preach or, or whatever it is they may be talking to you about in a conversation, are they talking about Jesus? Are they talking about his word? Are they talking about salvation? Are they talking about the gospel of Jesus Christ? Or is it just a bunch of empty words and stories? You see, Paul says in Galatians 1.9, if any man preach another gospel to you than what you have received, let him be cursed. Ooh, that's strong language, Paul. But Paul was no sissy. Paul came out with strong arm. You don't want to believe that gospel? You should be cursed. He believed so strongly in the gospel of Jesus Christ, he was willing to die for it. His life was so radically changed by the gospel, he was ready to present the truth to everybody. Church, we, have, we are starting to lose the truth. We have been giving away the high ground for years. We don't want the Ten Commandments in the school. Why? We don't want kids reading their Bibles in the school. It might be offensive. So what? We don't want kids to do this. We don't think they should kneel at football games and ask for God's protection. Okay, do you want them to kneel to Buddha and ask for them to be hurt? What is it you want? But for too long, Christians have been silent and remained silent. And all of those rights and privileges were taken away from us. It is time for that to stop. Stop listening to the counterfeit stuff that the world is offering us, church. It is time to be firm and stand firm. Check the message. Are they teaching and preaching salvation? Every lesson, everything that comes out of a pastor teacher's mouth should point people to the cross of Jesus Christ. And if I ever stand on this platform, and no matter if I'm in this 1030 service or this service, and I don't preach Christ crucified, remove me from this place because I'm no longer useful. See, I love my Savior. I know what my past life was like. I know what I've been saved and redeemed from. And I only want the real thing. I don't want anything counterfeit. Fathers, in this place, you don't want counterfeit love from your spouse, do you, or from your children. You want the real thing. So why do we settle for counterfeit faith? Why do we settle for, settle for counterfeit teachers? Why? Salvation is by grace alone, through faith alone, through the word of God alone. And if they add anything to that, they are in the wrong. Because Romans 10, 13 says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Then there's John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Whosoever. Did you catch that? It's whosoever. Anybody. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord. Whosoever there in John 3, 16. Whosoever means anybody, anywhere who calls upon Jesus in repentance and faith. They can be saved. And if you attend a church anywhere else that says you got to do something else to be saved, run. Jesus alone is how you are saved. Grace through faith. Repentance and faith through Jesus. You see that word deceptive there in that verse? If you take notes in your Bible, if you've got a highlighter pen, my Bible, my Bible students like to hear this, or a Cheeto. Mark this, highlight this word. That word deceptive, or whatever translation you're using, that word deceptive there is something very beautiful. In the Greek, it's the word plastos. Well, we're not Greek scholars, John. I know, and neither am I. But you know what the word plastos means in English today? Plastic. It's where we get our word plastic. You see, counterfeit is plastic. Because those false teachers and preachers, they're plastic with plastic words. Why use the word plastic here from, the, uh, from, from Peter? Why would he use such a word in this? Because plastic is pliable. It's bendable. It's something that can be molded to fit whatever's going on in your day that day. I want to say this. Thank you, Father God, that his word is not plastic. It is the same yesterday, today, and forever. There's nothing plastic about the God that I serve you see, that's one of his attributes. He is immutable. Big fun word to say that just means he does not change. We change. Society changes. God's word doesn't. And neither does God. Plastic, pliable, bendable. It can be molded. And then you can melt plastic down and change it to some other mold, whatever tickles your fancy. That is not the kind of savior that you and I serve. We need preachers and teachers who are willing to stand firm in the unchanging Word of God. If you don't have a backbone to say that you believe in the Word of God, you're in the wrong business. 
there are people in this church, just as there is in every church, who love the sensual rather than the spiritual. You see, we'd rather be coddled and comforted than we would be to be called out. But I want to remind you of something. In order to be a church, in order to be a church here at Central Trinity, that means that at one point we were called out to gather together. So you, if you're going to claim that you only want to be coddled and, you know, the Bible calls it a tickling of the ears, you only want to hear the easy stuff, that's not what the Bible teaches. We've already been called out. We've been called out and separated from the world because we believe in Jesus Christ. It is time for us to return to our first love, which is Jesus. Jesus Christ being our first love. We got to come back to him. Can you spot a counterfeit just using the message or the method? Thirdly, check their motive. They will exploit you with their greed. What is their motive? What is the false prophet, the false teachers, the false preachers? What is it they do? They want to make merchandise of you, and they want to use you and manipulate you. The sum, the center, and the substance of their message is themselves. It's themselves. If you turn on some of those television pastors, like my mom watches sometimes, that's the message you'll hear. Well, if you will just send me $50, I've got this little vial of uh, vegetable oil that I have blessed, and I will mail it to you, and God will heal you, but you have to send me $50. Where's your scripture for that? Why, are we, why, why would we ever fall into that? But those people have millions and millions of followers. So when I look out amongst a crowd like this, and we have probably 80-ish, 90-ish here today, Just because I don't see 400 doesn't mean that our message is wrong or that we're doing something wrong. You see, the masses often go the wrong way. The Bible's talked about it. John's preached about it. Wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to death and destruction. There are many who find it. But those of us who want to follow Jesus, Jesus being the only way, that is a narrow path. And few find it. You need to be able to check out their method, their message, and their motive. They want to make merchandise out of you. That word merchandise there is where we get our word emporium, like a store. Because they want something from you and they'll manipulate you to get it. So my challenge to you is this. You guys can come on up. My challenge to you is this. Are you willing to even try to spot a counterfeit when you see one? Or are you too afraid? You see, the church will continue on a downward spiral and a downward path in America if we don't have some bold Christians willing and ready to stand up and stand for the truth, the truth of God's word. Maybe you've never had an opportunity where you nailed down your own salvation and you're sitting here today going, I don't really know if I'm even saved. I have really good news for you. We're going to sing a song here in a second. It's called, Oh, Come to the Altar. I'm going to give an altar call. This altar is open. You can come up here. Fathers, come and pray for your children. Come and pray for your wives. Come pray for your families. Wives, come pray for your husbands. Pray for your families. Brothers, sisters, pray for all of them. But the altar is open for you. And for those of you who may not know if you are saved or not, I have really, really good news. Jesus loves you and he wants to save you. You come and find me today after the service and I can tell you how you can be saved and know that you were saved. Would you pray with me this morning? Father God, thank you so much for your words. God, may we always take them as truth. May we always depend upon your word to decide what is right and wrong in this world. Father God, help us. And if there are any here today, God, that do not know if they are saved, would you, through your Holy Spirit, put a little tug in their heart? Have them to come forward today so they can know that they can be saved. Lord Jesus, we love you. We praise you and we thank you for all that you've done. We give you the honor, glory, and praise today. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Would you stand this time as we sing this beautiful song? The altar is open. Don't be afraid. There is no judgment judgment here at Ignite. Come as the Lord leads you. Jesus.
Jesus is calling. Have you come to the end of yourself? Do you thirst for a drink from the well? Jesus is calling. We'll come to.
treasure you found. Father God, help us as we leave this place today to tell the world of the treasure that we have found. And that treasure is you, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. May we take that message of hope and peace and love and may we be unwavering with it as we leave this place. And Father, help us to be unwavering with it here in your church. May we always stand upon our rock that does not move, which is you. May you always be our foundation. Thank you, Father, for the people and the souls that are here today. May your hand of blessing be upon them. Thank you for them, Father. We love you, we praise you, we thank you. We ask it all in the name of Jesus. Amen. Have a blessed rest of your day. We're going to sing House of the Lord as you leave. You're welcome to hang out and sing with us if you want to.